This tutorial is for clue 10 of the Brilliance pattern, which is the Expression Fiber Arts Mystery Knit Along pattern for 2024. In clue 10, we're actually going to begin by finishing the cable cross for the, the final uh, diamond in clue 9, and that's going to actually come into this um, colorwork diamond that we're working in clue 10. So I am going to go ahead and start by working the setup rows, uh, which are that final cable cross from clue nine, which just begins with either your dark color for the swatch or with your color eye for the main project. Um, in this in this particular tutorial, I will go through all the the pattern rows since they're worked on both the right side and the wrong side, but I am also going to demonstrate how I work um, how I catch a float on the back of the work for um, when you're carrying. So in this in this pattern, you're actually carrying the darker color across a longer uh, group of stitches uh, here in the middle of the of the diamond. And so I'm going to show you how I catch my um, floats on the back of the work so that they're shorter and are less likely to cause tension and issues when you go to block so that you want you want lots of um, you want it to stretch without uh, pulling anywhere or gapping anywhere. So I will demonstrate that and let's get started. Once you've finished clue nine, this is kind of where you should be on your project. If you look at your cable stitches that are coming underneath here, and then your cable stitches that are coming over the top here, they should be those two cables should be butted up against each other, so right next to each other. So you have the two cable stitches here and the two cable stitches here all the way across your project. So that's kind of where we're starting. And the reason that we're um, continuing with just this, um, it would be your color eye or your dark color, and continuing to work two more rows in this is because we actually want the cable to cross before we begin working clue 10, the actual pattern rows for clue 10. So I'm going to go ahead and work setup A and B here and I am working with the I-cord edge so if you're doing the seed stitch edge just continue with the seed stitch according to your um, normal pattern and I am going to be working these cables without a cable needle so if you want to go ahead and use a cable needle you can do that I'll verbally explain how to do that although you should be a pro at it by now <laughs> All right, so setup A, we begin with a purl one. Then we knit two, purl four, one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna do a cable four front. So you just wanna take two stitches off of the left needle and hold them to the front and then knit two stitches, and then knit the two stitches from the cable needle. Once you work that cable for front, you're just gonna repeat purl four, two, three, four, and then cable four front again. So two stitches off the front, off of the left needle and held to the front, knit two stitches, and then knit the two from the cable needle, or rearrange them as I did and knit all four, two, three, four, and when you've worked that all the way across, the purl four and then cable four front, you're gonna finish off the row with purl four, one, two, three, four, knit two, one, two, and then a purl one. Slip your edge marker, work your edge stitches, And that is the end of setup A. And turn to the back. 
and work setup B. Work your edge stitches. Slip your stitch marker. And then set up B, we work knit one, purl two, knit four, and then the pattern repeat is purl four, two, three, four, knit four, one, two, three, four, that pattern repeat again, purl four, one, two, three, four, knit four, one, two, three, four, and you're just going to keep doing that pattern repeat until you have three more stitches on the needle, then you're going to work a purl two, knit one, and slip your stitch marker. Now at this point is where you're going to begin graduating in your light color to be working your edge stitches with. So because I'm working the I-cord edge, I'm going to be working the I-cord edge as normal, um, just with my light color. If you're working the seed stitch edge, you actually wanna take your light color and purl all five of the edge stitches. All right, so that's beginning to add the light color here on this this edge, this right edge of your project. And you just want to get your yarn situated, um, or your your two colors situated, so that you're ready to use both. I should have uh, brought that dark color to the back before I before I began working my edge stitches. So that's my bad. I will fix that when I get there. Um, all right, so we're gonna com continue uh, with the light colored edge. So if you're working the seed stitch edge, you just wanna knit that first stitch and then work the rest of the, the edge as usual. Uh, but with the I-cord edge, I'm just gonna continue working as normal, but with my light color, so it'll continue and finish working the edge stitches with the light color. All right, I'm gonna bring my dark color to the back here. Okay, so now that we've finished setup A and B, we need to move to row one of clue 10. And at this point, we're just doing stranded color work again. So a couple of tips. First of all, you always want to um, hold the dark color below or to the left of your light color. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're not stranding too tightly. Okay, so you wanna keep your, your floats loose but not floppy, I guess. All right, so we're gonna begin with our color I and do a pearl one. And at this point, I'm just going to bring my light color over my dark color um, so that they're crossing here before I make that stitch. And I'm just gonna kind of cinch everything down, bring that to the front, tighten it a little bit more, and then work that first, first purl stitch, okay? After that, I wanna swap my colors so that my dark color is being held to the bottom and my light color is being held to the top. And again, I do hold both yarns in my uh, right hand when I do this. So if you hold your yarns differently, then do what you do. All right. So our row one pattern um, repeat is as follows. So we're gonna knit one with J, knit one with I, and then we're gonna do five with J. So this is a longer area um, that we're carrying this dark color across. So I'm actually going to knit the first two 
And then on the third stitch, I'm going to catch my float. That is, I'm going to catch my dark colored yarn um, across here before I work the light colored stitch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my dark color, not around the bottom of the needle where I would normally make a stitch, but I'm gonna bring it across the top of the needle. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap it around from top to bottom around the front. Then I'm gonna bring my light color up and then bring my dark color off. Okay, so I'm gonna continue working that stitch. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna carry that dark color over two stitches. Um, so you can do this on your second, you can do this on your third, you can do this on your fourth. Um, but then all I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm again, bringing my dark color back down so that I'm continuing to work with my, my colors in the correct position. So complete the five stitches. And when we get to the back, I'll show you what that looks like. And then we're going to knit one with I. And we're just gonna repeat this. So we do J, I, and then five J. So I'm gonna do it off the after the third stitch this time. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And then I'm gonna catch my dark color here on the fourth stitch. So I'm going to bring the dark color um, over, uh, I guess that's wrapping counterclockwise, bring my light color the correct way, and then bring my dark color off. Four, bring my dark color back down, five, and then continue. One with I, one with J, one with I, then I have five more with J. One, two, I'm gonna catch again on this third one. So I'm gonna bring my dark color up around the top of the needle to the back, bring my light color the way I'd normally wrap it, and then bring my dark color off. Four, dark color comes back down. Five, one with I. And then I'm gonna purl the last stitch with my dark color, my eye. And then I'm going to swap to my light color to work the edge stitches. So again, if you are working in seed stitch, you wanna go ahead and knit all five of these edge stitches. If you're working with eye cord, you're just gonna work them as usual when the way that you work eye cord. That is row one. So we turn to the back and at row two. So I'm gonna show you right here um, where the light color is making this little V. That's where I caught my dark color float. So you can see it comes under and then over that stitch and then back under. And you can see on the second time where I caught it one stitch later, you've got a little bit longer float here, shorter one, shorter one. And then I caught it again here. So those little Vs are where I caught the, the longer float with my light color. So I'll demonstrate that again later in the pattern. Row two. Um, again, if you're working the seed stitch edge, you wanna knit this first stitch. And if you're working the I-cord edge, just work your I-cord as normal. and that should complete the uh, light color edges. All right, at this point, I'm going to cross my light color over my dark color to make this first stitch, which is gonna be a dark color or color I knit stitch. And then again, I'm going to hold my yarns so that my dark color is below my light color and work row two. So I work one with I, or one with J, one with I, three with J, one, oops, two, three, one with I, one with J, one with I. All right, so that pattern repeat again. 
is J, I, J, 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 I, J, I. You're going to work that all the way to the end. So, J, I, J, 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 I, J, I. And then for this last stitch, I'm just going to bring my dark color, my I, to the back. Knit one, drop it back down to the front, move my stitch marker, and then bring my light color over to do the edge stitch, however you're working your edge stitches. And that is the end of row two. Row three, work your edge stitches. Slip your stitch marker. At this point, again, I'm gonna bring my light color across the top, bring up my dark color from underneath and to the front, curl that first stitch, make sure it's nice and tightened down, and then I'm going to work my pattern repeat, which is just J, I, J, I, oops, I, J, I, J, I. I'm just going to repeat that all the way across. When you have one stitch remaining, you're going to bring I to the front, curl one, bring it back to the back, and then use your light color to work your edge stitches. And that is the end of row three. Row four, work your edge stitches. Then I'm going to bring my light color across the top of my dark color and then bring that up from underneath and to the back to knit the first stitch and then bring it back down, and then I'm gonna make sure that my light color is being held to the top to work row four. All right, so after we knit that first stitch, we're going to do uh, the pattern repeat, which is J, I, J, I, J, I, J, J. That repeat again. J. I. J. I. J. I. J. J. Again. J. 
I, J, I, J, I, J, J. You should have one stitch remaining, and that's to be worked a knit one with the dark color with your eye. Slip your stitch marker. And then work your edge stitches with your light color. And that is the end of row four. Okay, row five. Begin row five with our edge stitches. Slip the stitch marker. And then I'm going to bring my light color across the top and bring up my dark color from underneath it um, to work that first pearl one nice and snug. And then I'll drop the dark color down so that it's underneath the light color as I work across here. So row five, our pattern repeat is three with J, one, two, three, then I, J, I, J, and then another J. And then because our pattern repeat begins with three J's, we're going to have a total of five J in a row. So I'm going to work this third one, which is the beginning of the pattern repeat. So it's the first of three. Then I'm going to catch my dark color on the next stitch. So I'm going to bring my dark color um, above and wrap it around the needle to the back. Bring my light color and wrap it correctly and then bring my dark color off and work that second J. And then here, bring my dark color back down, work the third J and then finish the pattern repeat. I, J, I, J, and then one more J. Again, so I have three J's in a row now, so I'm gonna work the first one, and then I'm gonna catch my dark color on the second one. Bring my dark color back down, work the third one, and then finish out the row, I, J, I, J, J. And you're just going to work that until you have one stitch remaining. Bring the dark color up. Work that last stitch, purl one. And then slip your stitch marker and work your edge stitches with your light color. And that is the end of row five. Turn to the back and just show you here again um, where I've caught my dark color float across. You can see here the little V, the light colored V here, and then another one here where I've caught that dark color coming across so that that float is not quite so long. And now you can see the ones down here for that first row very clearly. Those three these. All right. Row six. Begin by working your edge stitches. Slip your stitch marker. Bring the light color across the top, bring up 
the dark color from underneath and to the back, knit one, bring it back to the front, and then we're going to drop it down and work with our light color above. So the pattern repeat for row six, J, I, J, I, J, I, J, J. That repeat again. J, I, J, I, J, I, J, J. One more time. J, I, J, I, J, I, J, J. Bring the dark color to the back, knit one, slip your stitch marker, and then work your edge stitches. That is the end of row six. All right, row seven. Begin by working your edge stitches. Slip your stitch marker, bring the light color to above and bring the dark color up from underneath and then to the front, purl one, nice and snug. Bring the dark color down below the light color. And then our pattern repeat for row seven is just J, I. You're just gonna do that over and over again. J. I, J, I, J, I, J, I, J, I, J, I, all the way to the end. So you just have one stitch remaining. And when you have that last stitch remaining, you bring the dark color to the front, your eye to the front, purl one, drop it down, work your light, your edge stitches with your light color. And that is the end of row seven. Row eight. We begin by working our edge stitches with the light color. And then we're going to bring the light color over the top of the dark color, bring that to the back, 
knit one nice and snug and then I'm going to bring my dark color down so that my light color is being held to the top and work row eight so after that initial knit one our pattern repeat is J I J J J I J I that repeat again J I J J J I J I again J I J J J I J I and you're just gonna keep working that repeat until you have one stitch remaining bring the dark color to the back knit one bring it back to the front slip your stitch marker and then work your edge stitches with your light color And that is the end of row eight. So now that I've finished a full pattern row, first I wanna show you here on the back, you can see where I've caught my floats a couple of times. There's row five and there's row one. And then on the front of the work, this is what you should have. And you should see the little diamonds um, here at the very bottom are actually coming up from the previous the diamonds of the previous um, clue from clue nine so that's pretty much it that's that's all of clue 10 and i guess i'll see you back for clue 11. thanks